You know, when Nintendo went from the N64 controller to the GameCube controller, for the most part, it was an upgrade across the board. At least I thought so. But there was one part of it that really took a step backwards. However, as we've gone along here, we've, of course, seen more and more advancements when it comes to the, the retro gaming scene. And, well, one mod in particular I wanted to go over today because, one, I, I think it does genuinely improve the GameCube controller for uh, certain titles. And, two, I think this is a really cool mod for someone to do if they're just starting out and want to try something a bit more beginner friendly, especially when it comes to soldering. So we'll, we're going to take a look at having the Super Nintendo controller be converted over to function with the GameCube. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel. So in order to accomplish the conversion of a Super Nintendo controller over to the GameCube, we need to get a certain mod kit from Four Layer Technologies, and this is called their Super GC Plus. It's an entire drop-in replacement board for the Super Nintendo controller, meaning we do need an actual Super Nintendo controller. Now, the good news is it doesn't have to be one that necessarily works. The cable can be frayed or even cut completely because we are we're replacing all of that. All we really need out of the controller are, of course, the, the plastics with the buttons, the case, and the shoulder button. So when we open up this Super Nintendo controller that I did get online, that was kind of roughed up a bit. Specifically, kind of the buttons were worn down somewhat, so I just replaced some of the plastics. Uh, all we have to do is pull the board out after moving those Phillips head screws, and then desolder those shoulder buttons. Really just the two wires that go to the board on either side. I would also recommend cleaning up any of these buttons or any of the crevices around the controller. Really, you can take all the plastics and just drop them in like a, like a bucket or Tupperware that has basic hand soap and water, and then maybe even scrub them up a bit with a toothbrush, then just leave them out to dry. So with our plastics all set up, we do need to build the board somewhat. Really, it's pretty straightforward, and one of the reasons I say this is a good first step for beginners when it comes to soldering is that all the points are relatively spread out and they're pretty clearly marked and easy to get to. So when you have the board in front of you, we do need to put the main chip on the back that will make all of this come together. See, we do have a board that is nice and new, gold contacts on the front, so the button presses will feel very, very solid, but we have to technically put the brain on the board. And it's pretty easy to do. Once you line it up here, I would tack one one point down and then you just go around and solder each point. I recommend using some basic paste flux and then just kind of take your time making sure everything's connected really well and then go back around just to double check every point after you're done. Really you're just checking for any bridges between those points and if you do have solder connected you can try two things. One, you can basically put some flux down and hope that maybe you can have some of that solder absorb off onto the, the soldering iron tip or you can use some solder braid or solder wick to basically pull that off of there. All this stuff are things you can find on Amazon, and I'll leave some links down below to these different soldering accessories. Now, we do also need to add those shoulder buttons on, and this is also very straightforward, considering we have four different through holes, two on either side up on their shoulders, and you just take the wires, push them through, and then solder all four. We also need to add a rumble motor. That's right. They will have that equipped similar, of course, to a GameCube. Why not take advantage of that? And they're using kind of a, a smaller rumble motor here. However, we'll kind of discuss how it feels necessarily in use later on, but we just have two points to solder to here, and then it has some adhesive that it sticks to the back of the board. After all of this is done, we do need to, of course, solder up our connection to the GameCube, which is divided up with these different wires, and as you match them up based on the diagram that Four Layer has up on their website for this, you solder all of the wires on the opposite side, and... We're pretty much ready to go. So after putting all of our nice, clean plastics back together here with the membranes and all this, we drop the board in. We then put the, the two uh, shoulders at the top, kind of slide those in underneath of those buttons. And then we just have to kind of wrap the cable up and around. If you look on the back of the Super Nintendo controller, the back plastic, it kind of has like this, this little L-shaped guide that the cable inside will kind of wrap around. That way you have at least a little bit of slack. Maybe if somebody rips at it, it won't put immediate pressure 
on those solder points at the bottom. Then you put the back on, the different Phillips head screws in, and that's it. You're good to go. You now have a Super Nintendo controller that will act and play just like a GameCube controller on your system. I saw some people ask if this would work with the, the Super Nintendo Classic controller because you could still technically find those brand new and that means you won't have like wear and tear on the buttons or a roll of the dice technically. I did take one apart just to find out and unfortunately it doesn't line up with it. They could technically develop a drop in replacement board, but that does seem like even more of a niche project than what's already a niche project. So uh, I think at this time you can still find Super Nintendo controllers relatively easily. You'll just have to clean them up but as I mentioned I would try to find ones that are just broken specifically ones that have the wires all messed up on the end since that's stuff you're replacing and when it comes to the plastics easy enough to clean them up a bit with a toothbrush and some soapy water of course we do have some limitations technically we only have a d-pad there is no joystick so you're kind of missing out on that aspect. You have to think about games that you would be able to take advantage of just using the D-pad for the GameCube. And there are some, I mean, you immediately think of, of course, any kind of 2D platformers, but also the Game Boy Player. And I think this is one of the better uses for this and probably one of the reasons I would even pursue this, uh, considering the D-pad on the GameCube is not great when playing Game Boy or Game Boy Advance games, but the one on the Super Nintendo controller is perfect for it. And I believe it was Ori. I, I did a, uh, I did a video on it here where they did release a controller that lined up pretty well, uh, with a D pad for the, the Game Boy games. And I think the Super Nintendo controller is even better than that one. So technically, if you were interested in maybe using a Game Boy interface or something like that with the homebrew scene on your GameCube, I think this is a really fun project to pursue. I did try it out with a couple of GameCube games, mostly things like Sonic Mega Collection, Mega Man Legacy Collection, titles where it would make sense to use that D-pad more than the joystick. And again, those, those games are kind of few and far between. However, I will say you can remap Apparently, the joystick to the D-pad using like a, an application on the Wii through Homebrew, and then you might be able to play more games that way. Two GameCube games I did find fairly good success with would be Soul Calibur 2, which actually controlled really well considering the D-pad. I feel like for most people on the GameCube, when you play that as Link, you would default to that over the analog stick. At least I would, but the D-pad on the GameCube didn't exactly lend itself well to a fighting game. However, with the Super Nintendo D-pad, it worked pretty well. And the button layout translated well here too. Now, one game that the button layout didn't necessarily translate to immediately was Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3. That does use the D-pad completely, and I was able to eventually get the hang of it. However, I'm used to, for example, grind being like the top button, like in this case for PlayStation, it'd be like triangle or something. Um, so it took a bit of getting used to, but eventually I was able to, and it played fully here. So both Soul Calibur 2, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 uh, were great, and I'm sure there are a couple others you'd come up with. Those are just two that were off the top of my head I knew used the D-pad completely. To me, I really created this controller to take advantage of that D-pad with Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games, and it works really well in this regard. So just going through some of the more popular Game Boy Advance games, of course, in the Mario's, it works well there. But I also played uh, things like things like Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, which, by the way, Vicarious Visions, I know they're basically merged in with Blizzard now, but man, they did a very, very good job with this game, considering it was limited to just being on the Game Boy Advance. It's it's still an interesting title in the Tony Hawk Pro Skater series, and I recommend more and more people try it out just for kind of the novelty factor of it. Because like when they when you do a special move, for example, it zooms in like it's supposed to look cool, and it, it's it's really hard to tell what these pixelated characters are doing in the first place. Oh, and I did mention it has Rumble, and I tried it out with Pokemon pinball sapphire ruby edition on the game boy advance as that does have rumble added in some of the gamecube game boy games did have that added functionality to take advantage of the rumble in the gamecube controller and here it works great and in fact it, it's not as violent of a rumble as the gamecube controller and that sort of makes sense considering the differences in, in the diff in the rumble motors but in this instance i, I I feel like it's better, mostly because it's closer to your hands as it's right behind 
uh, where you're holding the controller. Whereas with the GameCube, you have your two handles and the rumble motor is just right between it. But when I was playing Pokemon Pinball, it was a nice subtle rumble as everything's going on, of course, with the Pokeball bouncing around. When I tried uh, Super Mario Advance, just when you get hit by an enemy, it, it kind of rumbles. That's sort of it. But for those games, and I guess games you'd be able to play on the GameCube when remapping the buttons... The rumble, I would say, is actually better than what's there with the GameCube stock. Oh, and we do still have access to the Z button. It's been remapped to the select button on that Super Nintendo controller, so we can access, for example, the back menu with the Game Boy Player on the Cube. So fortunately, we did have that one extra button here on the SNES controller to cover that. And I guess after all of this, the big question would be, is it something you should consider doing? Well, I can tell you the board that you get uh, from four layer it is high quality and it comes together really really well as they mentioned being drop in for your super nintendo controller however it's not necessarily the most like inexpensive mod considering you do need a an authentic super nintendo shell and those shoulder buttons which everything combined could cost you anywhere from 50 to 70 dollars depending on the condition of that super nintendo controller and there are of course adapters out there that will allow you to plug your super nintendo controller into your gamecube already but I think this is a really fun project to pursue if you're someone who maybe wants to attempt an easier modification and maybe learn a bit more about soldering. This is definitely set up for more of like the beginner in mind. And I do believe this is probably one of the best controllers you can use outright on the GameCube when it comes to the Game Boy Player. Just the way it's all set up with that D-pad and of course the shoulder buttons works really, really well. But let me know what you guys think about this one down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.